Hey friends, so I recently saw a video from Kat or Kitch Snitch. I never know how to pronounce her actual channel name. She's been on YouTube forever. She did a really fun video where she went category by category and tried to deduce what she would pick if she could only choose two brands. She didn't officially make it a tag, but I wanted to play along, so I'm gonna do it anyways, and I'm gonna throw this in my tag playlist because that's always a fun time. I'm just gonna share with you the two brands that I would choose in each product category. Something that I was also thinking of, like as I was putting this list together, is I kind of wanted to do one that's very eyeshadow specific maybe make it exclusively indie beauty. So that video will probably be coming up very shortly after this one because I thought it would be fun to just dedicate a whole video to only two brands for eyeshadow categories because I love eyeshadow. That's kind of the focus of this channel. But let's get on into the actual meat and potatoes. If you like these kind of videos, feel free to subscribe. I put out new videos every single week. And thank you to Kat for thinking this up. It's very creative, very difficult. So I will leave her channel and the video listed in the description box as well as the prompts in case you would like to do this yourself. And if you end up filming this video, do me a huge favor, leave your link in the comments so I can watch it too. Okay, so the first category is hair care. I have two very different brands, the first one being Olaplex. I use their number three step all the time and I feel like it does wonders for my hair. And the second one is Tresemme. Yeah, I know, two insanely differently priced brands, but I find myself coming back to a lot of those standard Tresemme products, their heat protectant, their conditioner. I think they have a really nice core line that really works well for my hair. So if nothing else, I'd have both the bougie and the broke <laughs> side of both hair care products, and those would be my ride or dies. Next up, we have skincare, and I'm quite picky when it comes to skincare so this one was a little difficult. I tend to only like one product for one step in my skincare routine from one very specific brand but if I had to nail it down I'd pick The Ordinary and Sebamed. Sebamed makes very boring products that are incredibly basic and kind to my skin. I use their moisturizer a lot and I feel like I could get on with a lot of their products because the more basic the fewer ingredients the better. And The Ordinary makes a lot of chemical exfoliators and oils that I really like, I really enjoy. I think it's a well-priced brand and I love that they're always expanding into new products. So I feel like with those two brands I could kind of cover all of my bases. In terms of nail polish, well, great timing Maggie. I, I do my nails tomorrow so they're bare right now but this one was very easy. I did a nail polish like overview a while back and I said that my top two brands, hands down, Color Club and Sinful. Sinful is especially an excellent brand. They're $2 and they are some high quality nail polishes. Really rich, pretty colors that don't chip or peel all that easily. They wear pretty nicely. I would go to Color Club for like my fun holographic shades. Shades are very unique that you can't really find in a Target. So I could take care of all of my base colors with Simful and get the essentials and then for a little bit of fun I would go to Color Club. For tools this one was a little tough because I was like well what are tools that's you know that can be really broad that can mean like brushes that can mean like hairstyling tools that can mean beauty skin tools it can kind of be all over the place so to simplify I first chose elf I have so many elf brushes some that I've had for a very long time, like back when I was first getting into makeup, it's obscene, and Tweezerman. Because I figure if there's any gap that I need, I could probably go to Tweezerman, get like an eyelash curler or a pair of tweezers or something of that nature. I feel like that could fill any gaps in my collection that would need to be filled. Okay, number five is makeup overall, and I'm prepared to be dragged through the mud with this, but... ColourPop and MAC. There, I said it. I know, I have a monthly series where I roast ColourPop, and it's been going on for over a year now, but they also make some of my favorite palettes and base products, so it's not hypocrisy, it's called duality. 
And as far as MAC goes, they're really pretty classic. A lot of their products I go back to over and over again. And I feel like in terms of base products and just like your standard go-tos, they really have it covered. So I would go to MAC. MAC was kind of my first like splurge brand, so I naturally have a lot of nostalgia and fond memories with that. ColourPop, well... <laughs> I don't even have a good excuse. It's just with all the stuff they churn out, I'm something's bound to work for me. For foundation, I chose NYX and L'Oreal. NYX is kind of pissing me off because a lot of my favorites, they do end up discontinuing. I somehow remain optimistic. I guess there's a new version of the Bear With Me Tinted Skin Veil. We'll see how long that sticks around. L'Oreal, I have used a lot of their foundations in the past. I feel like they're pretty like solid in terms of a drugstore brand that you can go back to pretty easily. I still miss their Pro Glow line. I hope they bring that back. A lot of these brands are like they discontinued my faves but I'm choosing them anyways because they were my faves. Make it that way you will. <laughs> Up next is concealer. This was also a weird one. I did again choose NYX because I really like their Can't Stop Won't Stop concealer. I think they have like a pretty decent line of concealers depending on your skin needs. And the next one, I wasn't sure if I should say Becca or Smashbox. Cause the Becca under eye corrector is a product I use every day, but it is now under Smashbox. So Becca slash Smashbox even though the product I have was originally Becca, but if I were to repurchase, it'd be Smashbox. You all know what I mean. Next up, we have bronzer, an area in which I struggle. The one bronzer that I enjoy is by e.l.f. So this is a category where I was like, well, guess it's one then, so yeah, e.l.f. Okay, moving on. Blush, I chose Milani and Illamasqua. I know a lot of people are very fond of the Milani Bake Blushes, as am I. Luminoso is one of my favorites. I think they also do matte formulas very nicely, so I figure like having the variety of finishes would be really nice. And Illamasqua, the blush shade Katie is one of my favorites. I always feel so pretty and angelic whenever I wear it. And they do have a lot of more unique shades in their blush line. So in addition to having a wide range of finishes, I'd also have a good range of shades to add to my collection. Highlighter is another one where I was like, oh, I don't really have any like go-to highlighter that I am a ride or die for. So this was one where I was kind of like, um, I guess I'll pick these two, but I'm not super married to them. The Essence Pure Nude Highlighter is one of my favorites. I think it's very pretty. And I also enjoy the Milani Prep Set and Glow. That's a finishing powder, but I like using it as a highlight because I feel like it blends into the skin really nicely. Yeah, there's no one brand that I can think of off the top of my head where I'm like, well, I would go for highlights from them before I'd buy anything. So that was that was an interesting prompt. It really got me thinking. Eyeshadow primer is another category where a brand discontinued the one that I love. And I mean, I'm going to throw it in anyway, but still, what the hell? <laughs> the Ulta Matte Eye Primer is one that I've been using for years. It's a real favorite of mine. It's tinted and it really locks in your shadows without making it difficult to blend. I also selected NYX because the NYX Glitter Primer since discontinued is what I use every day for shimmers on my eyelids. Um, I am going to assume that NYX is going to bring this back in some sort of different form, but if not, I'm going to cheat and tell you the brand I would use instead, Frenier for the Frenier Pixie Epoxy. Is that cheating? Yes, but now you know. Eyeliner was another one where I'm like, oh, well, kind of... I don't wear eyeliner all that often, and when I do, it's kind of like the same five colors, and for that, it's pretty much essence. They're very cheap, they're good quality, and that's kind of all I can ask for. I used to really love MAC Pearl Glide liners, but those things dry up so quickly. The most beautiful colors I've ever seen that just hard as rocks. It's, it's a sad thing. I think they need to change their packaging, not so much the formula, but that was a real bummer. Otherwise, they would have made the list, but as it stands, 
it's just essence. Mascara was a pretty easy prompt because I tend to just use one mascara for my top lashes and one for my bottom. L'Oreal, the telescopic curved brush, is magnifique. And I feel like L'Oreal, they have a good variety of mascaras, so if that one ever gets discontinued, God forbid, I could find something pretty easily. And the second brand would be Clinique. I love their bottom lash mascara. I happily pay $14 for it every six months, even though it's ridiculous to have one mascara for your bottom lashes, but, well, here we are. For eyeshadow, I did go a little indie with this. I did, again, choose ColourPop. They do make some of my favorite palettes. They do also make some of the worst things I've ever seen. Again, it's called Duality. Second, Sydney Grace is just such a great eyeshadow brand. I really think you can't go wrong. They're very beginner friendly, and there's just such a very nice range of colors. You could go neutral, you could go a little more fun. I am such a huge fan, and I have so many Sydney Grace shadows. So many. Oh my goodness, it's obscene if I think about it too much. Over 50 at this point. Anyways, next up, eyebrows. This was super easy. NYX and e.l.f. NYX has one of the best shade ranges in the eyebrow world, at least as far as I'm concerned. I've been using their products for years now, and I just can't imagine picking anything else out. I also remember my first ever eyebrow product was the e.l.f. brow kit. Since then, I've grown really fond of their brow gel. I think they still have a lot of old favorites while they're still innovating and finding fun new things. I feel like those brands would both give me pretty decent brows, because, you know, they kind of already do. Next up, lipstick. I have so many different brands of lipstick. Oh boy. I chose Sephora and Flower. Sephora has a really beautiful shade range. I especially love their liquid lipsticks. I have quite a few shades of those. And I think they're a very good liquid lipstick product because they are quite pigmented and they do dry down, but there's not that cloying dryness where it feels like it's just sucking the moisture out of your lips. I would highly suggest it. I have four shades, really, really like it. And Flower Beauty, the Petal Pout Lipstick in Spice Petal is what I wear almost every day. It is what I'm wearing right now. I really love the lipstick formula. It's comfortable. It's good quality. And I could see myself really enjoying other colors in the line or other formula variations. So with those two brands, I think I'd get a lot out of what I'd be able to try. The setting spray prompt was another I only need one. That's MAC. I use Fix Plus every day and literally nothing else. No, no other brand can compare and I just I have no interest in trying other brands because I just love Fix Plus so much. So that was pretty easy. The last prompt was lashes which lol I haven't worn lashes since junior prom. Um, <laughs> so I kind of was like Oh, I don't know that I would really have anything to add because all I remember was that the Ardell Demi Wispies were fine. You know, they held on. As someone who doesn't even wear lashes ever, <laughs> it seemed a little silly to participate. So I'd be curious to hear what you all would choose lashes wise. Like what two brands do you think are good quality that you wouldn't mind um, only shopping from for forever basically in this prompt. But isn't it great that this is just a little exercise? This is just for you to think about and you don't actually have to only stick to two brands for any product or for makeup in general. Dang, wouldn't that be terrible? I look through my entire collection and I'm like, oh my goodness, it is just such a hodgepodge of brands. Just so many different ones, some that have even been discontinued completely, or some that are fairly new, some that have just been around for ages and ages. And I was like, man, I'd be so sad if I had to give that up. Even temporarily, it would suck. So I'm glad that this is just a little experiment and we don't actually have to do this in real life. I would never want to. Anyways, thank you all for watching. This was pretty silly, pretty fun. I had a great time filming this. And stay tuned for part two. It's gonna be all about eyeshadows. Because that's what this channel is about, basically. So I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!